G'day mates, welcome back to Uncle Nico's Pattern Wars. And the gloves are truly off between two heavyweights in the sleep apnea implant space. In the blue corner, with their pants around their ankles, we have Inspire Medical Systems, the veteran in the space with over 100,000 implants. And in the red corner, we have the rookie, Nick Soa, who has just received FDA approval for their sleep apnea implant. And now they're looking to muscle in on Inspire's US territory and get a piece of that sweet, sweet apnea pie. And Inspire's going, well shit, our share price is already down 37% over the past five years. The house of pain. Now there's a new rookie on the scene with perhaps a better implant, what are we gonna do? Bing, a light bulb moment. Let's get legal involved. Piss a couple of mil up against the brick wall. So Inspire is suing Nick Soa of a patent pain. infringement. And then Nick Soa have gone, well, guess what? We've got patents of our own. So we're counter suing you. We use 300 series stainless steel. Is that something you patent? No, we don't really patent things. Patents you, are for the weak. Yeah, you share the, <laughs> there you go. And, you know, the problem is like patents are generally used as a blocking technique. Right. They're, they're, they're like using like landmines in warfare. They, they, they don't actually help advance things. They just stop others from following you. Um, and most, most patents are, are, are BS. Anyway, I thought today we might just compare the pair and talk about the pros and cons of the two implants. And if you've been following my channel, my socials over the past month, you might've noticed that I'm not really a big fan of these implants for many reasons. And I just don't feel the value proposition adds up. I don't think the risk is worth the potential reward. And I don't think those therapeutic outcomes are that great anyway. It's just my own personal opinion, but at the same time, I have gone through a lot of the research, a lot of their sponsored clinical trials, which are very questionable. I've spoken to a number of Inspire patients. There's a lot of horror stories. Patients are not adequately informed about the surgery, about the device, about how it works, basic stuff. Patients go through all this effort, then they go home and Inspire gives you an app that tells the patients how many hours they've had the implant on for. That's it. No information on sleep quality, breathing quality, how many apneas they're having, blood oxygen levels, nothing. They're not tracking anything. And what's ironic is Inspire is the biggest investor in a company called Enzodata. And Enzodata does sleep apnea diagnostics and also remote patient monitoring. So here we have Inspire investing in this company and that's what they do. They monitor patients with sleep apnea and yet they don't do it. What do you think about that? They can easily do it, but they choose not to. Ignorance is bliss. I have a feeling they don't want the patients to have access to data. Because if they do, the patients can look at it and go, hang on a sec, something's not right here. The clinicians can look at it and go, hang on a sec, something's not right here. Right now, no one has access to any data except for their sponsored clinical trials. And this is the results that are all over their websites and all their, over their promotional material. Go and check out the sleep apnea CPAP groups. They're tracking everything. They're tracking sleep quality, they're tracking blood oxygen levels with the rings, they've got their apps, they've got their Oscar, they've got their sleep HQ. That's all they're doing. You go across to the Inspire groups, it's a ghost town, there's no information. And I think it's possibly designed that way. Anyway, let's compare these two implants. And we'll start with the location of the implant. Now both implants work by stimulating the hypoglossal nerve which controls your tongue. But just on that note, these implants are only really suitable for a very specific type of sleep apnea, tongue-based sleep apnea. And this is when, when you fall asleep, normally when you're on your back, your tongue falls back into your throat and blocks your airway. And these implants, they stimulate that nerve and it keeps pushing your tongue out of your airway with every breath, like a metronome. Zap, 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 zap. Tongue forward, tongue forward, tongue forward, tongue forward, every single breath. That's how they work. But think about this. 
what happens when you don't sleep on your back? You sleep on your side, or perhaps you sleep with your face pointing downwards. How can your tongue possibly jump back upwards into your throat? It can't, it has to stay down, okay? In fact, old mate Vic Veer, who's one of the most famous ENT otolaryngologist surgeons over in the UK, he's got a big YouTube channel if you wanna check it out, lots of great videos. He said the other day, him and his team went back and looked at over 6,000 diagnostic sleep studies, that's what they do over there. And they looked at the data and they found that over 60% of all those people that were diagnosed with sleep apnea, 60% had an AHI less than five, considered normal, when they were sleeping on their side versus on their back. Basically, what he's saying is so much of the sleep apnea that is diagnosed is positional, guys. There'll be so many of you that could just sleep on your side or maybe a little bit elevated and you'd be fine. You don't need any help, okay? And the same thing goes with this Inspire surgery, Nixoa surgery. But let's talk about the location. And we'll start with the Inspire implant. And we've got Inspire version four and Inspire version five. And there's a little bit of a difference, so I'll talk about both. With Inspire version four, what you have is the battery, the stimulation device, inserted here. It has a little wire, a sensing lead that they implant down sort of in between your ribs area and that's designed to sense your breathing. And then they tunnel another wire up here and they put a cuff around the hypoglossal nerve. Choose one of them. So you end up with a cut here and you end up with a cut here. Now with the Nixoa Genio implant, there are some big differences. It doesn't have that pulse generator, that battery system. It doesn't need that lead that they tunnel up here. It doesn't have the sensing lead that goes into your ribs. You've just got the one incision here, and then the implant goes in here, and it has these two little paddles, bilateral paddles, that go on both the hypoglossal nerves. So with Inspire, they just put a cuff around one, and that's why with a lot of patients, when the tongue moves forward, it goes out and across. Because right. you're just firing one side, yeah? Uh, uh, uh. But with the Nixoa system, two paddles, they're not cuffs, they just rest up against the nerve, they fire off the impulse. All right, that's how it works. But because it doesn't have the implantable battery, each night you have to put on a patch and then the battery system sits on the outside and connects in, all right? So that's difference number one. Number two, the breathing sensor. Now with Inspire, like I said before, they have this sensing lead. Actually, this is important. Version four had the sensing lead. With their new version five, they removed the sensing lead and now the actual IPG, the pulse generator, has, I think, an accelerometer in it, something like that, that can measure your breathing so it knows when to fire the impulse, so it's firing at the right time. They call that synchronized. Now with Genio, Nixoa, it's asynchronized. Basically what that means is the pulse generator is just firing set timing rate and you basically have to adapt your breathing <laughs> to the rate of fire. It's not measuring your breathing, it's just going pulse, 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 pulse and your breathing basically has to time in with that. <laughs> Nerve stimulation. So with Inspire, like I said before, cuff goes around one of the hypoglossal nerves, but apparently you can also get this other nerve, which is the C1 nerve. I'm not gonna go into that in this video. You can watch Vic V's video on that. Um, whereas with the Nixoa, 
like I said before, not a cuff, just little paddles that rest up against the nerves, but bilateral, both nerves. Next, we have the battery. Now with Inspire, it's the internal battery and it needs to be replaced every 10 years. So you will need to go back, out with the old, in with the new. With Genio, it's an external battery. So every night you put on the applicator and then you click in the battery system. Next, we have the incisions. Now with Inspire, we have two incisions, one here and one here. And with Genio, we just have the one incision. Now, if you listen to any of the Inspire surgeons, they'll all mention really small incisions, maybe like five centimeters. Look at the pictures. Five centimeters is like that, right? They're not five centimeters. They're like seven or eight centimeters. Look at the pictures, guys. Actually, go to the Inspire website and see if you can find an image. Next, we have MRI capability. Now, with the Inspire implant, there is more metal, so you can only have lower strength MRIs, 1.5 Tesla versus three Tesla with the Genio implant. And last of all, visibility. Now, with the Inspire implant completely internal, apart from the little remote control that you use to switch the device on and off, um, and perhaps, you know, the scars. If you're sleeping with someone with an Inspire implant, you wouldn't even know they have it. With the Genio, you have the external battery application that you need to do every night. So there you go. Now, if you are someone who has an Inspire or a Genio, and you currently have no way to track what it's doing, I want you to check out this here. All right. It's a Sleep HQ O2 Ring Pro. You slide it on your thumb or your finger, you won't even know it's on, and it's gonna track your blood oxygen levels. You get your average blood oxygen, how many times it drops 3%, how many times it drops 4%, you get your pulse rate, and you also get your movement data. And if you like using Sleep HQ, if you've got an iPhone, we're bringing out the Android app, hopefully in a couple of weeks, you can also sync up Apple Health or Google Health Connect. So if you're tracking your sleep stages using an Apple Watch or maybe an Aura Ring or Ring Home, whatever you've got, you can bring that data in, sync it in with the Ring data, and you've got yourself a great little tracking solution. Until next time, sleep well, look after your mates, and I'll see you soon. Cheers. I think an awful lot of people know that when you sleep on your side, you don't snore so loudly. And so that's why husbands and wives roll over their partners to stop them from making so much noise. And what I didn't realize was how much better people were when they slept on their side. So what I did was I looked at the last few years of our sleep studies, and we do an awful lot here. We do 6,044 different sleep studies in the last few years. And in those sleep studies, I found that when you compare when you're sleeping on your back, the snoring levels and the sleep apnea on your back compared to on your side, 60.3% of people were completely cured when they slept on their side. Their snoring levels came down. Their AHI came down to less than five. So if you're over five, you have sleep apnea. If you're under five, you're within the normal limits and therefore considered normal. And so 60.3% of people were abnormal sleeping on their back with sleep apnea, sometimes up to 100 AHI. But when they slept on their side, they came down to less than five. It's nowhere near as sort of inconvenient or, or difficult as having an operation, for example, or an implant for the rest of your life, CPAP, mandibular advancement devices. All those things have sort of annoyances, inconveniences related to it. Sleeping on your side relatively in terms of risk to you is very, very low for a 60.3% improvement to the point where you're cured is a remarkable improvement and something I just didn't realize so much. So I thought to myself, why on earth aren't we all talking about this?